Welcome back, Multi Battle Conference. Uh, we are here with another one of our returning teams. Uh, this time, uh, another another veteran team uh, going by the Rural Jurors, formerly known as the Russian Assets. We have uh, Taryn on Discord and Dina here to my left. Go ahead and say hi, guys. Hello. Hello. All right, so uh, we're going to get started here with uh, going through their team real quick. They started off with uh, Tabu Fini for their first pick. Uh, followed by the Kanto Raichu, uh, finishing off their Firewater Grass Core with the Victini and Sarina. Uh, after that, picking the uh, Drift Blim, no doubt going to be holding the Misty Seed a lot of the time. Uh, after, in the second half of the draft, they sort of went into a Trick Room mode with the Jellicent, Dragalge, and Tangrowth, and uh, finished the draft off with a couple of E-tiers in uh, Yamper and Trubbish. So uh, why don't you go ahead and tell us about your team, guys? Uh, sure. So I'll start off with uh, Tapu Fini. We really didn't expect to get Tapu Fini because we were the 11th pick. So uh, seeing that we were able to get such a great uh, water fairy type, we decided to uh, start building a water fire grass core, starting with Tapu Fini. Uh, Raichu complemented that really well because of Lightning Rod. And Victini kind of helped round out that core, as well as Serena. And then to sort of add some flair and to cover where we felt the four of them were weak, we have Drift Bloom, who, you know, can't be faked out and can learn useful things like Tailwind. Um, and then Jellicent can be very bulky, also can't be faked out. And we could potentially do some shenanigans with its abilities and then Dragolodge as to help, um, help us in a, a Trick Room mode if we need it. Um, and then Tangrowth, who then will have redirection and can be very bulky. And then, of course, as you said, we rounded everything out with our cute little E-tiers, with our little Corgi Yamper, and our little pile of trash. Trubbish. <laughs> All right, excellent. So uh, first, we're going to have Anthony going through uh, your draft grade. Take it away. Yeah, so as far as your draft is concerned, we gave it an A-. minus. Uh, I really think that this is one of the stronger points in your guys' uh, in your guys' grading overall. It, it I this is your guys' third season, correct? Drafting. Yeah. Okay, so mm -hmm. I was telling Matt when we were discussing this that this is like a very very veteran draft right here. Um, you guys got the eleventh pick. You took essentially what was the best available Pokemon at the time, the best Pokemon available, like we talked about in our video. And you chose something that's extremely versatile that you can change the sets on a week-to-week -week basis and still do very crucial things on the team. You took Tapu Fini. So fantastic. That was a great pick. Then you being it, you guys being your third season, you understand how important redirection is and, and how premium a good redirector is, especially in this league. So right away going, all right, we're going to put the Firewater Grass Core on hold for a little bit. Let's get a redirector and let's get one that synergizes with Tapu Fini very well. You went and got Kanto Raichu. Excellent, excellent choice there, um, grabbing that in the second pick. And then finishing off your Firewater Grass Core, you know, like textbook stuff, and then going immediately into what is going to be the best Tailwind Setter or Speed Control user that we can pick up. You guys picked up Drift Blim, which just complements so perfectly with the Tapu Fini because it gives you a consistent way to get uh, Speed Control up right away. Um, then going, all right, cool, we got the fast mode uh, picked out in these first five picks. Let's go into the Jellicent, and let's start a little bit of a trick room mode. You go grab Jellicent, you grab Jagalgi, and then you go, you know what? We have one more pick. Let's grab a, another redirector because we understand that redirection's at a premium here. Let's go with Tangrowth. It'll help a little bit in our trick room because it has a base 50 speed stat. Can do other stuff too. Honestly, I just felt that this was like almost a very textbook style uh, way of going about a draft. This is this is how you do it for the most part. You get the best things that are available to you on the board that are going to synergize well. Um, I pretty much like most of the picks. Uh, the trick room mode. We one of the reasons why you're not at an A plus <clears throat> is because maybe you could have probably taken a little bit more of a priority into that uh, and got some better trick room uh, setters and sweepers that could have really rounded out the team better. Um, it's tough because obviously. Things like Drift Blim and Serena are going to be very high on the board. So, like, those are the you can you can move up to the fourth and fifth slot and take a Trick Room Sweeper and a, a Setter. But 
If you're not sure if you're going to be able to fill out the rest of your Firewater Grass score and you're not sure if you're going to be able to get that reliable Tailwind user in Driftblim, since there were two Rillaboom, two people grabbed Rillaboom and one person grabbed Tapu uh, Bulu and then we also have the NDD. So there's four terrain setters, four teams that could potentially want a Driftblim to, you know, really get around out their course. So I understand the, the logic in it, but the issue is, is that because you waited so long and played it so safe, that your sixth and seventh picks, uh, while they are good and they fill those roles very well, um, you they are very subpar in what they actually like in, in compared to some of the other things that are in that tier that got taken. So like the normal Caparaja, some of the other premier trick room setters, those were already off the board. So you kind of just have to go with what you go with. The Tangrowth is a great pick. I have no idea how it lasted that long. Yeah. Um, because it's it, it's a great Rage Powder user. It can do so many good things. Has uh, you know good ability in Chlorophyll if you if you chose to you know try and get that going and get fast Sleep Powders off. Um, so I think great value there. And then the two E tier picks. I mean, the you know you guys very clearly had a plan that you guys wanted to fill out. You know, lots of B tiers to complement with your two S and single A uh, A tier. Um, obviously you knew if you were going to go for Victini very early, that was going to take two S tier picks. So rounding out the team with a lot of B tiers, which I think B tier was, had a lot of good role, role players, um, was very good. And I think this is probably the strongest part of your guys' report card is just how well you guys drafted overall throughout the draft and consistently made really good picks that made your team stronger as the draft went along. So kudos to that. Yeah, that got you an A minus. I think uh, the uh, the only thing I, I might have changed uh, that would have maybe gotten you up to an A or an A plus is uh, l- like you said, if if um, <clears throat> if you guys had prioritized the trick room mode a little bit, uh, and I think the way probably to have done that was to maybe uh, drop the Victini pick down down toward the bottom because I think especially uh, around the around the third round. I'm not really sure. Uh, I'm not really sure anybody had their eye on Victini. Most people had already picked up their S tiers anyway. Um, so I think if you had just uh, dropped that down to to the end and and prioritized some of your uh, some of your B tier picks, um, that that might have done it for you. But uh, I, I also understand going for Victini up near the top because with the the kind of uh, the kind of core that you guys were going for, um, it, it makes sense that it was uh, essential for for the. Uh, the, the, the combos there and the synergy that you wanted to achieve. So, um, so, uh, yeah, a, a minus still, still one of the higher drafting grades as for, uh, synergy. <clears throat> um, the synergy here I think is, uh, for the most part, pretty obvious. I think the, the Finny Victini Serena is an incredibly powerful, uh, fire, water, grass core. Uh, it's, it can do a lot of things. Um, all of these Pokemon have good, uh, a good balance of, uh, Offense, speed, and, and bulk to some extent. Uh, it works incredibly well with the Raichu. Um, having a Lightning Rod user and a, a, a Follow Me Pokemon uh, with that core is is uh, really fantastic. I think um, uh, oftentimes when you see uh, an Electric type with a Fire Water Grass core, uh, that's that's kind of the the fourth type that tends to go with them there. Uh, it's not as important as as the rest of the the other three, which is why the the fire water grass core is uh, is is what it is, and it's it doesn't uh, doesn't always require an electric type. But um, seeing the Raichu here just works so well with uh, with everything else that you guys picked, and the Drifblim has obvious synergy with with the Tapu Fini there. Um, most of the time we see Drifblim in terrain. It, it was back in uh, in Gen Seven with the Lele Drifblim combo with a Psychic Seed instead of a Misty Seed, but uh, it's the same idea here. It's the same kind of synergy. You uh, you get that uh, that special defense boost, and you get the unburdened proc at the same time. So, so, oops! Wow. <laughs> All right. Uh, so yeah, super fast tailwind. Um, it's an incredibly reliable tailwind setter, uh, and the the synergy in your in your trick room mode is is obvious as well. Um, it's uh, you all right. We got it. Okay. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Technical difficulties, guys. Um, but yeah, the synergy in the trick room mode, I think, is is fairly obvious as well. It's this is this to me looks like uh, like kind of an almost fire water grass core. Uh, you're missing your second fire type here, uh, but you've got the the water type in Jellicent, the grass type in Tangrowth. Um, it it 
I can sort of see it achieving the same thing depending on the specific Pokemon you're going up against because uh, uh, typically the fire type in that core is going to want to uh, be that, that grass type killer and Dragalge can, uh, can take out grass types very, very well. So, um, it's, uh, yeah, you, you've got, you've got a tremendous amount of synergy here. Um, so we, uh, we gave you an A minus there. The only, I, I think the only thing that would, uh, bump you up to, to an A or, or an A plus would be, uh, maybe some, some extra type cores, uh, because these are, uh, all, all of the stuff you have here just works, uh, just works so well with with one another. I, the the main thing that we're highlighting here is is uh, is the type cores that you have, and uh, but also uh, Driftblim just uh, Driftblim and Raichu. I think uh, being your support Pokemon, I, I think uh, they they work very very well with with everything uh, else you have, uh, typing or or otherwise. Uh, they're just the way uh, by the way they support the team. So uh, really fantastic synergy grade there. See if I can get this thing to go here. Uh, so for threat level, we decided to give you a B, um, which is obviously the lowest grade that you have here. I'm gonna have to hold it like this. It looks like. Um, but uh, honestly, one of the main things that we saw is that your your team is gonna probably ne uh, need a decent amount of setup in order to get the offense going a little bit. Not necessarily a bad thing. This is something that Matt and I had to deal with with our team because while it, it synergized very well together. Um, it oftentimes needed some some type of setup, whether that be a quiver dance, a shell smash, fake tears, something to get it going a little bit. Um, so it's not necessarily a bad thing, but you don't have that instant offense. It can just come out something like a Cinderace or a Darmanitan or, you know, any of these others, high S tiers, Landris, you know, can just come out, start launching uh, attacks off of this m magnificent attack stats or, you know, good abilities, anything like that. Um, so you, obviously Victini has access to things like Swords Dance, Tapu Fini has access to... Don't think it has Swords no? Dance. No? Well, which, uh, move that we were talking about that's a boosting move? Uh, mostly just Calm Mind. Okay, yeah, so both of the, uh, Calm Mind sets, um, and then, uh, <clears throat> what's it called? The Dragology Life Orb with Adaptability, that's something that's still gonna need a Trick Room to be set up for it to really flourish. I can see uh, that Dragology using a Weakness Policy really well. Yeah, Weakness Policy as well. Uh, there's there's a bunch of things that you can do, but it's going to require a little bit of setup. Not necessarily a bad thing. In the hands of good players who are going to prep, you can consistently get your, your setups off. But uh, it's something that is going to... If you get countered, it's going to be very hard for you to out-offense your way back into the game. You're going to have to maneuver yourself. You're going to have to uh, you know outplay them in certain aspects and use your support Pokemon to the uh, uh, highest level. Stuff like Raichu is going to come into handy a lot if it can charm things, nuzzle things, you know, neuter the team in cer certain ways using follow me, fake out, all those different tools that Raichu gets. That's really going to be the way that you're going to be able to get back into games if you fall behind. It's not going to be just by shooting offense out at them. So, you know, while you have a lot of synergy, uh, the threats just really aren't there mainly because you went for what clearly is like a lot of versatility and things like Tapu Fini and Victini. Um, and while those things are at a premium in a draft league, uh, you still are going to have the issue, especially with timer to, to kind of finish teams off in some sense. So not necessarily a bad thing. I think it's something that we kind of hit you guys on last season as well. And, uh, it, it showed a little bit throughout the season where we were talking about your trick room mode with Gastrodon and the Cop Raja. While it was good, it, it may not put out the offense that you were expecting. And sometimes in certain games, you could see that like, oh yeah, you came out of trick room and didn't really get any KOs, you know, or you didn't really get as much damage as you liked. Um, so you guys might run into the same problem here, but the difference is, is that the, the synergy is so much better this year and the, uh, just the typing and the versatility is so much better that it should, it, you should have the tools to get out of it. Speaking of versatility, um, we uh, again we gave you an A minus on on that one. Uh, uh, we we really liked uh, we we really liked all the different options that this draft uh, seems to have. <coughs> I think a lot of your uh, a lot of your top mons are versatile in in uh, in a lot of different ways. The Tapu Fini I think can run you can you can run so many different sets on Tapu Fini. You, you can do, like, the classic uh, Calm Mind with either a, a Pinch Berry or, or even Leftovers. Uh, you can use uh, Choice Scarf, even with, with Soak. Um, 
you can uh, choice specs is is pretty common. I think uh, I I think you could probably get away with a life orb set if you wanted to just bring out Driplim and and max the Tapu Fini immediately. Um, doesn't have a, a an amazing special attack set, but I think with with max moves and life orb, um, you can uh, if you make it go fast and just blow stuff up, it can actually get away with doing that. Um, uh, the Victini as well. The Victini, I think, it has a it has a lot of d- different coverage. Um, you can go physical or special on Victini, which is very important. You can even uh, uh, cheese somebody with a, a Final Gambit as well. It's the it, out of all the Final Gambit Pokemon in the game, it has the highest base HP stat. Um, and uh, Final Gambit is is nice in this format because you always know uh, which slot is going to be able to Dynamax, so you're you're never. Uh, uh, you, you you never have to uh, accidentally you know uh, final gambit into into a Dynamax Pokemon. Although I, I suppose it could happen if you don't expect the max slot to actually max. Um, but yeah, it gets it's a lot of different coverage, physical or or special. It can even set up Trick Room. Uh, it has Glaciate for for speed control. Um, it can set up with Calm Mind as well. I can see it running a Choice Band or a Choice Scarf. It's it's pretty similar to Tapu Fini. It's it's one of these high BST legendary Pokemon. Uh, that can do um, a, a lot of different things, and it's very balanced in terms of speed, offense, and defense. Um, and I, I think you have two incredibly versatile support Pokemon, too. Uh, you have very good redirection in, in Raichu uh, with a very fast fake-out. You can ru- you, you, you're able to run uh, Follow Me and Lightning Rod on it now. Um, and it, it just has so many tools that like it it honestly because of its speed it honestly feels kind of like a prankster pokemon sometimes because you're outspeeding everything and you're just able to to get off a charm or a nuzzle or an eerie impulse or or it even has you know encore uh there's there's a few things that I'm that I'm forgetting off the top of my head but it, it has so many things that are uh absolutely disruptive and Driftlim too has has a crazy amount of tools that it makes really good use of because it's so damn fast it's bread and butter is obviously going to be that tailwind, um, but uh, it gets all kinds of support moves uh, like like Will O Wisp and uh, Sunny Day, uh, Rain Dance, Haze, Clear Smog, uh, Destiny Bond, uh, probably some more as well. And you can even use it as a, a, a weakness policy sweeper if you if you have something that can uh, uh, proc the weakness policy on it. You could you could even like volt switch with volt switch it with your Raichu that activates unburden as well, so you get a big boost in speed and offense. Um, I, I can see this uh, this top half doing a tremendous amount of stuff, and even uh, even th- this this trick room mode that you have down here. Um, it doesn't even always have to be a trick room mode. Jellicent can even, I, I can, I can actually see you putting a choice scarf on it and going for, for water spouts, uh, at some point or, uh, and, and Tangrowth as well. Tangrowth functions very well outside of trick room. If you just want to use it as a bulky redirector, it can go physical or special as well. If you, if you look at those offensive stats, hundred base attack, 110 base special attack, and it has decent coverage for those. Um, Drag algae is kind of the only thing here that that really really needs to be in trick room, but uh, it hits so hard and gets uh, gets a decent amount of coverage as well that it's uh, it's going to be a, um, pretty useful in a lot of matchups. I, I just think that there are there are so many modes and and uh, different different ways you can combine these Pokemon to uh, adapt to different matchups. Uh, that, that, that really adds to, to the versatility, not just because you can switch modes, not just because some of these Pokemon have really deep move pools, uh, but because you can use a lot of these different combinations to, uh, to, to bolster your, your matchup against, uh, against many, many different teams, which is a big part of versatility. It's, it's how, how you're able to, uh, to adapt to the greatest number of matchups. And I think this team can do that really, really well. So, uh, we gave you an A minus there. Uh, which results in an A minus overall. Most of your grades here were an A minus, just with a a B on that threat level, which which Anthony explained. But uh, this is as as far as we're concerned, this is one of the best drafts. Yeah. Um, we gave you an A minus for a reason. Uh, our your your overall grade. Uh, we're we're not giving out very many A minuses. Um, it's it's yeah, it's it's hard to get up there. So. Um, and and you have a, a a good amount of pros here. Some some cons that Anthony will go over as well. But uh, just to hit some of these pros here, uh, you have a very very strong fire water grass core, which we mentioned uh, while going over synergy, and it has some extra typing synergy as well. 
Um, the uh, Finny Victini and, and Serena is very strong, very balanced, and it's just made even better by that Raichu. And uh, I really like the combination of uh, Fairy and Psychic between the, the Victini and the Tapu Fini as well. Um, mostly, uh, mostly because Tapu Fini can help against, uh, against dark types that might threaten Victini and, uh, even Driftlim and Jellicent can, can help against, uh, opposing ghost types as well. So, um, but you know, there's a reason Pokemon like, uh, like Gardevoir and Tapu Lele have been so, so strong in the past. Uh, Psychic and Fairy is a very powerful combination. So to have, uh, that pair as well inside of your Firewater Grass Core is really fantastic. Um... Like I mentioned, both of your S tier picks are very balanced. They're very versatile. Uh, they synergize with each other very well. Uh, 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 Water Fairy and Fire Psychic are incredible together. Uh, they both have very balanced stats. They can be defensive. They can be offensive. They can. Uh, they both have uh, options for support or speed control. Um, they they're they're very balanced and they they're 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 great with each other. I absolutely love that combination. Um, you also have versatile redirection as well between the Raichu and the Tangrowth. Um, you have a combination of both Follow Me and Rage Powder, which is really nice because uh, people it's it, it actually makes your Rage Powder a little bit stronger because if you if you have a team where your only redirection is Rage Powder and somebody's going to bring a strategy against you where they really, really need to get around redirection, all they have to do is slap safety goggles on one Pokemon and they can do it easy. Um so uh, they're going to be a lot less inclined to do that because you could just uh, throw out the Raichu instead of the Tangrowth, um, which which actually uh, makes the Tangrowth a bit stronger because people are less likely to run safety goggles against you. Um, so I like uh, I always like seeing both of those uh, on the same team if you can't get double follow me to begin with. Um, <clears throat> you also have a, a very fast and reliable Tailwind again. Drifflim is incredibly fast once he gets that Unburden boost off. Uh, it's a ghost type, so it can't be faked out. Really, the only thing that's going to be able to stop that Tailwind is like a Prankster Taunt. Yeah. Um, it's it's a, an incredibly reliable Tailwind setter. Uh, it is it is a, a little bit unfortunate that it kind of needs that seed to get going, but uh, we'll, we'll, uh, Anthony will we'll mention that over in the cons there. And then I also noticed that this draft is really, really balanced, like surprisingly balanced for having... Uh, two S tiers and two E tiers. We saw teams like uh, like the Mats and the Sky Pillars last season that had two S tiers and two E tiers, and they were uh, they were very very top heavy. You basically knew uh, all six Pokemon that were coming to almost every match. You know, it was it was basically just you had to guess six out of seven. Um, but uh, the way you were able to to make it a little bit more balanced was by only picking that single A tier in Kanto Raichu and then filling out the. Uh, most of the rest of the draft with uh, with with B tiers here. Uh, the teams like the Mats and, and the Sky Pillars last time, they went with two S and two A tiers, uh, which made them quite a bit more top heavy. Didn't leave as much points for, for some of those mid tier picks. So I think it, it's kind of unfortunate that you're missing out on, on some more A tier Pokemon because A is a fantastic tier, um, but it does allow you to have a much more balanced draft so that you're, um, you're, you're not having to... Uh, constantly pick between uh only seven pokemon and then you you know you end up having to bring a, a d or an e tier as a bluff mon and your opponents kind of know ah, that thing's probably not coming so um <clears throat> they know more or less what they're going to be dealing with once they see uh once they see your draft and, and team preview so um <clears throat> you guys at least have eight solid mons that uh i'm assuming you, you know your picks one through eight the top of through the tangrowth are probably going to be seeing team preview every single week. The Yamper and the Trubbish aren't really worth bluffing. Um, so at least you're, uh, you, because you have that more balanced draft, you're going to be able to keep your opponents uh, on their toes a little bit more as far as like, uh, you know, what do these guys have in the back on, on each side? You know, you're still going to keep them guessing because you have eight solid mons. Um, and it's, uh, it's kind of impressive that, that you were able to do that with two S tiers up there and then two, eight, or two E tiers at, at the bottom. So not something that we saw in terms of uh, draft composition last season. No, not at all. It was a very, very balanced draft overall. Uh, in the so cons, is, is this okay to move? I think, no, I think we're okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, just right. leave it right there. It's fine. <coughs> for the... Uh, lean this way just a little Yeah, bit. I am. Uh, for the cons, uh, some of the things we knocked you on is, you know... The trick room mode isn't exactly the slowest that you can get. 
Uh, a lot of slower trick room modes are going to tend to have you beat. It's going to require you to run something like a room service or an iron ball to outspeed them. And the problem is a lot of your Pokemon prefer other items. You know, the Jellicent is probably going to want some type of weakness berry or, you know, something like that. Maybe mental a, herb. a mental herb, something that is going to allow it to uh, properly get trick room up uh, consistently. <clears throat> the Dracology is really going to want like a life orb or a weakness policy or something that's really going to allow it to just get rolling and offensively. Um, so because of that, you're, you're not going to be, you don't really have the flexibility to just like throw an iron ball or room service on certain things. And that may be a little bit of an issue when you go against trick room teams who are like, they might have something like the Copperaja, which we have and other teams like Copperaja has been like one of the more consistent uh, trick room sweepers in this league. I know you guys had it last season. Uh, it's pretty much been drafted every single season that it's been around. Base thirty, you know, it's it's, you know, that's pretty it's Cavalier base twenty, I believe. Um, I can see a Cavalier being pretty scary. For yeah, this you know, so things like that can really put you on the back foot. So you have to always be careful about uh, about you know slower trick remotes coming in. Um, another thing is uh, with the Drift Blim. You're going to be constantly running Misty Seed on that, which isn't a bad thing because it's the optimal uh, item to have. But you're going to either want to be leading it or make sure that you consistently have terrain up so that way when it does come in, you immediately get the Unburden boost. And that can pigeonhole you into a situations because if they see that you're not leading it and they go, okay, well, they definitely have it in the back, it can be a, a matter of like, okay, well, we know the Driftwind is eventually going to switch in. And we could just kind of try blowing up that slot, and you know, and hope that they just don't get any momentum. So you may be find you may find yourself in a situation where you're constantly having to either lead lay uh not lay lay, Driftblim and Feeny in uh, similar situa situations because you want to make sure that you know you can consistently get the the trick or the tailwind up. Um. Oh, another thing that we saw was, you know, your type synergy outside of that initial Firewater Grass Core, as good as it, as good as it is, um, you just aren't really filling out any other cores. You know, we saw uh, an attempt, I believe, at, you know, a Dragon Fairy Steel Core, but, you know, there's no Steel. There's only really Dragon. Uh, so, you know, Steel type would have been nice, but I understand there, there wasn't really a lot to go with. Uh, but, yeah, I mean... Do you, it would have been nice to see some of these other type cores being filled out, but I I honestly feel that uh, it's a little bit of a nitpicky thing because your guys' core is so strong. Um, it really doesn't matter if you you know you have those other cores and you were able to fill out the draft so well as as far as like role player role players and stuff like that that hopefully you know you're not it's not needed that you'd have like a steel type even though. Steel type defensively can be very strong, particularly on a team like this. Um, and then something that we obviously have hit you on before for the threat level, um, your threats that you have require some type of setup, whether that be a calm mind, whether that be trick room getting up somehow, um, you know, stuff like tain growth. I mean, it has chlorophyll, but you know, it needs it needs sun up, or you know, just certain things like that. I mean. Uh, not necessarily, like we said, a bad thing. I think it's just going to require a lot of prep from your guys' end. But I think it, if you just put in the, a little bit amount of prep, it's going to be so easy for you guys to consistently get your threats out, out there on the field in positions that you want them to be in. Because you have the Pokemon that are going to enable you to get those type of consistent results. I think choice items are worth mentioning there too. Mm -hmm. um, because those will allow you to get rolling a little bit more uh, a little bit more quickly with your offense, um, but they obviously limit your options as far as what you can do uh, on the field. So, um, you know, they requiring setup or requiring some kind of a choice item. They, they each have their their drawbacks. Um, so you, you don't you don't exactly have a, a Pokemon that can just hit the field by and and just by its very nature just uh, just start dealing huge amounts of damage. So. All right, so that pretty much wraps up uh, the report card section. We're just going to go over some questions with you guys, and uh, that should pretty much be it. Um, so the first uh, question that we have for you guys is, uh, obviously we've talked a lot about this Firewater Grass Core. Um, did you guys get every? Did you guys get all the mods that you wanted for this Firewater Grass Core? Were you sniped at all? Were there other Pokemon that you were thinking of? Well, what was your thought process on that? I'm scared. Try it. <laughs> 
<laughs> it should be fine. Bringing it towards you should be okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I think we're good. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely happy with this uh, fire, water, grass core. Uh, you mentioned earlier that maybe we should have uh, waited on Victini a little bit, but because um, we really wanted to prioritize like having a really good core, that's why we went for Victini right away. We really didn't want to risk having to settle for a lesser fire type um, because we felt Victini would complement this really well. So yeah, I'm pretty, I am pretty happy with this core. And no snipes from that core particularly. Not from this core, but in um, in in other uh, okay. you wanna, picks. You do either one of you guys want to address those snipes right now? Or you think, no, you might want to say that. Oh yeah. Um. So so if you didn't get sniped at all on uh, your initial firewater grass core, were there uh, were there any other places on the draft where where you uh, did get sniped, or uh, maybe some some extra plans you had in case one of the mons that you do have did uh, did get sniped? Any any backups or anything like that? So we did only really get sniped once. Um, I think what I really enjoy about the way we draft is we start with the first mon and kind of like talk about like the first couple of mons we want and then sort of keep building off of that. And we're always talking about multiple Pokemon, but the one we had settled on was um, Aromatisse. And we like went to sleep as the draft had finished for the day, woke up, we're both working. And it was like just to be about our turn. And I start scrolling up to see like who had taken what. And then we realized that what Romatis had been sniped and had been sniped from us for like a couple of hours. So then of course it was like this flurry of messages between us. of like, oh my God, we got sniped. What are we going to do? And then we, you know, handled it. And um, I actually don't remember what round that was. I think that was one the latter half the later half of the draft, but yeah, that was our, that was our one snipe. Did you, did you have any other uh, backups for stuff that you did end up getting in case they got sniped? Um, yeah, we did have another uh, couple of trick room setters in mind. Like Jellicent was one of the main ones we were looking at. So we decided mm -hmm. to just send a go with that. But Aromatisse was our first choice there instead mm -hmm. of Jellicent. Okay. And do uh, you want to take the last one? Uh, yeah, sure. Let's see if I can get this mic without falling here. <laughs> um, are you guys worried about your lack of offense at all? Uh, it's one of the things that we were talking about, obviously, before, uh, that it's not an instant offensive type of team that you typically would see, uh, as versatile as it is. Are you guys worried about lack of offense? And you could take it. It should be okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah I think it's good. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I definitely was um, concerned about that, especially as the draft developed and we saw that a lot of the good uh, Trick Room abusers were gone. I definitely started to become worried about, um, okay, we have Trick Room setters, but do we really have anything that could take advantage of Trick Room? And that was kind of the logic with picking a Dragalgy. Um, I feel like it has a lot of potential to abuse Trick Room really well, and I feel like Tan Growth could kind of complement the overall team and could kind of function in Trick Room too. So uh, uh, there were kind of slim pickings by the time uh, we were choosing our trick room abusers, but we did the best we could. So hopefully we can make some transactions later on to kind of uh, balance out the bulk with a little more offense. But I do agree that this, this uh, team probably could use a little more offense. I think a lot, of your, uh, a lot of your versatility and synergy can often make up for that as well. Yeah. So Yeah, um, true. All right, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna finish off with a few rapid fire questions that we're asking every team. Uh, uh, we want both of you guys to answer these individually. So, what uh, first off, what is a uh, what's a Pokemon on this draft that you're most excited to use? Uh, I'll go first. <laughs> um, I'm really really excited to use Tapu Fini. Um, I love using Tapu Fini competitively in VGC. And um, I'm really, really excited to be able to use it in multi-battle. This is the first time being able to use it in multi-battle. So when I saw we were able to get it, even though we had the 11th pick, I was really excited. So for me, it's definitely Feeny. And mine is staying on brand with Raichu. Um, I have also run Raichu a lot in VGC in like the late 16, late 17 early 18 times and it is the closest thing that I will ever get to running my beloved Pikachu. <laughs> I'm surprised neither of you said Gamper. <laughs> um, 
So uh, do not knock Yamper. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of terrible Pokemon, um, what? Uh, uh, the second question is, what what is maybe an underrated member of this draft that you think is going to do well that uh, that maybe other people in the league uh, don't have high expectations for? I'll go first this time. Um, the one that I think is super underrated for us is going to be tan growth because I think that we are going to have the ability to make it annoyingly bulky for our opponents. And I'm uh, I'm very excited to see what we can do with our little ball of vines i don't know i don't know what a tan growth is <laughs> <laughs> uh for me i think i'd probably say jellicent um it's not a mon that i'm too familiar with but when i was looking at the Cerebi page i saw that it has like a lot of bulk and it's a pretty consistent form of speed control so i feel like it has a lot of potential to help us uh, do what we need to do this season and uh the final question uh your expectations for this season um, you guys have done pretty well in the past. You've had some good drafts in the past. You've uh, almost made playoffs both times you've played. Uh, what are you looking to do this season? Um, I am uh, pretty competitive, so of course I would love to make playoffs. Um, everyone would love to make playoffs, of course, but my main goal is just to have fun. I'm going to try to do my best to you know, get to playoffs, but if we don't, the main goal is just to have fun. And uh, I've learned to never have expectations when it comes to Pokemon. So <laughs> I am just happy to be working with Dina again and happy to have our team. Um, and like, yeah, I would love to make playoffs, but it's okay if we don't. I am I am here to learn and to have fun and to talk with our very active server. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's honestly been uh, one of the greatest aspects for me and of MBL is just learning so much. It's it's actually helping me a lot in VGC too. So that's that's been great. It teaches you a lot of weird stuff, whether sure. it's mm -hmm. finding stuff that your own mons can do that you didn't know about, or uh, or if you if you lose to something weird and you're like, well, I'm never gonna forget that. So <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it's it's a great way to learn stuff that you uh, learn more information about the game that you wouldn't get from VGC. So. Uh, so that should that should do it for us. Uh, Dina, Taryn, do you have any final thoughts for us uh, before we sign off? Uh, no, I think I'm good. Mm -mm. All right. Uh, well, thanks for taking the time to join us. Uh, and once again, good luck this season. Thank you. And peace. Thank you.